guys and welcome back to another Tweak Man video. This is a follow on video from our Riga plinth that we've made. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be showing you uh, how to do the zebra wood finish on it. So basically for this job you'll need a uh, few artist brushes. So I've got a, a combination of artist brushes there, different sizes and that. Um, you're going to need some burnt turkey umber. Well, this is what's known as an earth pigment in the trade. So I have shed loads of different colours. So I have that one. And for instance, um, I have a, uh, whatever that one is there, that's a burnt cyanide. They're all like artist colours. So you'll see I've got yellow ochre, all the different colours. But for this project, the zebra wood effect, we're going to be just doing a nice dark stripe through it. Now it's pretty pretty easy. So um, so basically we're going to need some of that. Uh, and we're going to need to use this. This is what we're going to be polishing the actual um, plinth in. Uh, heat resistant special power polish. Now this is a form of French polish. So it goes on with a French polishing rubber. Which is basically this. A piece of hospital sheet. Or an old, uh, just a white sheet. Um, that needs to be cotton really. And a bit of stockinette wrapped around it, or you can use a bit of um, uh, cotton wool. You can use some cotton wool inside it, or some skin wadding. But I tend to just use stockinette wrapped up in in the uh, in the hospital sheet. <clears throat> so um, needed some methylated spirits as well there. Okay, and what we're going to be doing afterwards? Initially, we're going to be imprinting the grain on here, the striped effect, and then after that, we're going going to be tinting it so we use a light fast stain in a plum mahogany color and basically what we do is we mix that with the polish and we tint it so we're giving it a nice tinted effect now you could say why don't i just stain this initially but i've tried that and basically on the edge of the uh, plywood here we go i've got a piece here on the ed edge of the plywood it just takes it just blasts all the plywood out so i don't want to do that i want to leave the plywood because it's stripy in its own way so um basically i'm not going to pre-stain it so by tinting it basically what i'm doing is is i'm still keeping the uh the color in there uh the different shades and that so what we'll be doing is we'll be giving it the imprint on the top and then we're going to seal it with a clear with, 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 with the heat resistance special pal polish and build up several layers of that initially before then keying it all back or flatten it back or whatever you want to call it uh, I call it flatten it back uh, and then we'll mix in some stain with the polish so this is going to be uh, a video that I'm going to have to film over a few days so just for this section today I'm going to be doing the, uh, the, the, the false grain on the top of it but I'll release it in one video <clears throat> right okay so I've already put some uh, some heat resistant special power polish in my uh, plastic tub there. I just use old tubs and everything. This is just an old food tub, so it, I, I recycle all of that stuff. The wife tends to keep it for me. And um, so basically, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be putting some of this um, burnt turkey umber into the polish. Mixing it up and basically it's just like this is a bit like powder paints when you was at school as a kid um, You can mix this in with absolutely anything And you basically all we're going to be doing is wiping the edge of it and we'll be striping it across the, the surface of it I mean this is a very easy uh, process um, In my trade imitate imitating rosewood is the most easiest wood to imitate but when it comes to uh, very uh, plain looking woods it gets more difficult so zebra wood is very easy to do and i'll show you how now so we need to just load our brush up a bit <clears throat> now this wood itself this plier here this marine plier has already got a stripe across it which makes this even easier for me because all i'm going to do is follow it so we're just going <clears> to <throat> straight across like that It doesn't matter if it waves about because that's the natural uh, way the wood goes. A bit more load the brush up again. 
you can go thinner and uh and thicker because that's and then mist bits out as well like that that's 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 what happens with the uh natural grain of uh zebra wood <clears throat> keep making sure you load the brush up and by tinting it instead of pre-staining the wood as well what it effectively does is it makes this grain look even more realistic than it actually is because basically this isn't zebra wood itself this is just a, a zebra wood effect but I guarantee you by the end of this you probably wouldn't be able to tell a lot of the difference there we go Now what we're going to do is we're going to show you a uh, an image of zebra wood up now so you can uh, see what it looks like. Right, okay, you get the gist of what I'm doing here, don't you? So, uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to go thicker and thinner. There we go, we'll do a thicker one. Across. Well, OK, so we'll be back in a second once we've finished. Right, OK, we're coming to the end now. Um, we've done some thicker ones and some thinner ones. Right, OK, so that's that. We're going to leave that dry for a second, then we'll be back, and then we're going to just... Uh, give a couple of coats of sealer for today and then leave it to dry and then we're going to denib it back or flat it back um just to um you know give it another smooth finish because obviously when you start building up polish uh you get bits of rubbish stuck in the air now um if you was to buy this made up by somebody you would get this sprayed probably uh they'd do it in a spray booth but i don't have a spray booth and i do do modern finishes as well but um, this is going to be done traditionally. This is going to be French polished, but this is a French polish. But the, instead of uh, so, how do I explain this? So French polish is a North African lac fly dissolved in alcohol. A North African lac fly dissolved in alcohol is shellac. Uh, now this isn't shellac. Well, it has a little bit of shellac in this, but this has resins and uh, in alcohol. So basically, it's got a bit of shellac, but uh, a lot of resins. That's what makes this heat resistant. And it's a lot more of a, a harder finish. Now, a, a traditional French polished uh, finish tends to be quite soft in a way. It would damage fairly easy. Um, but this will it withstand a lot more um, stronger abuse. And not that this is going to get abused, but I, I tend to use this a lot, this, this polish, because it's very good. Right, OK, so we'll be back in a minute once this is dried. Right, OK, it's all dry now, so we're going to be putting in some, um, just a special power polish in a little uh, pot thing. Uh, I'll just use any old rubbish just to pour polish into and that bit of um, mess to make it a bit more uh, fluid, a bit more watery, uh, it flows better. Um, most importantly, get a glove on, which are in, in, uh, in very uh, high demand at the moment. So I haven't got many left now. I've got to start trying to look for some. So I'm sure I can get some off of my polishing supplier. Right, OK. So um, we're going to cut some stockinette. Now, we're not going to wrap this initially for the sealer coats. We won't wrap this in some uh, sheet material, some cotton. We're just going to use this as an open fad, you call this. So we're just going to put that into the, uh, into the polish. 
and then we're going to just flow this right across like so backwards and forwards don't worry about if it drips down the sides at this point it shouldn't do but so a bit more we need to keep it nice and uh, wet the rubber there you go and down the sides we go <clears throat> so if you can see the sides now it's uh light it's uh, highlighted the the stripes in the sides you see so all right okay now we're going to go around the the other side uh get that done right okay so uh if you look at that now like so look looks very effective really effective and it'll look even more effective once i build the color up so um get this back bit done so basically um, I'm going to do um, I'm going to carry on building up the sealer coats today and then tomorrow I'll be back and we'll start building up some colour on it so uh, I'll see you tomorrow hello guys so we've left our Riga plinth for uh, overnight um, basically now we're going to be flattening it back now what we use is uh, P500 I, I, I call this Lubrasil but this is what it's all, always been called for years I mean I've been doing my trade since 1988 so uh, it's a grey um, paper which is uh, super fine it's not the finest but it's just enough to, to uh, denib between coats um, so uh, basically what I've done now on this is I've left it to dry overnight. Uh, I gave it uh, eight coats in the end of um, of the special power polish, which is there. Um, because I want to make sure, I would really want this to look stunning after. So so uh, I've already flattened back the sides already to speed the video up because these videos really drag on. They, they're so time consuming. So basically what we do is we get our Lubrasil, we fold it into three like so. And then we basically just flat it back until it flowers up. We call it flowering up in the trade. Right, okay. So when you see that, see that on my fingers? That's like flower, so... Um, you don't always have to go with the grain because bearing in mind this is going to have shed loads of coats and that. And you won't see all the coats that I put on this. Um, but um, you'll see the, obviously the uh, the stages and the end finish. So I'm going across the grain at the moment there. Because um, I'm not really that really concerned at the moment. I just want to really just uh, get it looking smooth to begin with. Because when you're after a super fine, silky finish, you wait till the end of this. This is going to be so silky. I mean, if you guys uh, are thinking of making a, a plinth like this, uh, you may not have the same uh, skills on the finishing as me. Um, so you could use anything. You could use a, a water-based uh, varnish which you can water down 50-50 to make it flow better. And you can put that on with a piece of uh, stocking net as well, opposed to a brush. The problem I find with doing things with a brush is they go on a bit heavy and a bit sticky looking. And then you get brush strokes in it. So if you water a water-based varnish down, 50% water and 50% varnish, or 50-50 I should say, you, uh, it should flow straight across the surface like I've been doing with the French polishing rubber or, or the open fad as I call it right there we go so we just want to make sure we've got everything nice and flat back um, we're going to be doing several flat backs through the uh, through the process so just give it you can feel it with your fingers you just run over the surface of it with your fingers just to make sure it's uh, it's nice and uh, smooth. Now you've all, obviously we've uh, imitated the uh, zebra wood effect on this, but you've still got the original grain underneath this. I mean, this is a, I'm not entirely sure what this what this um, marine ply is made of. I've googled it and it, it says all sorts of stuff, so I'm not entirely sure they're, they're made of all sorts of odds and sods and that. I think so. 
but we're not really bothered about that it's extremely strong and it's going to do a, a wonderful job so right so we've we've flattened that back now we've just got some baby wipes here all we want to do you can use a tack rag otherwise it's uh it's like a sticky rag that you can buy and it sucks up all the um the dust off the surface i don't really bother with those they, they're expensive and I'm, I'm not really that bothered so all i do is i wipe it over with a couple of baby wipes wet wipes baby wipes whatever you want to call them um around the sides because i've uh i flattened back the sides before you've uh before i i, I, I before i started doing the top so you didn't see me do that but there you go, I'm getting tongue-tied again, sorry guys. Right, so now we're just going to dry off with a piece of kitchen towel. Now it takes years of experience to get to the stage that I'm at now to do this sort of polishing. <clears throat> and uh, unless you are uh, a, uh, a trained French polisher, you probably won't be able to achieve this. But you can do a fairly good job um, with the water-based. The water-based varnish is the best thing to use if you're uh, not that experienced. Right, okay. So we've uh, we've dried all the sides off and the top now. Make sure, give it a good old rub so we've got nothing on it. There we go. Right, just bring that over a little bit. Right, okay. So that's nice and dried off. There's no debris on the surface, no dust. So we've got our pot here that we had before. A special pal polish. Give it a shake, make sure all the product is mixed properly. We're going to put a little bit in there because I'm going to do a bit now and then I'm going to leave it for a bit. So this is uh, this is something now that takes a while. So I could be polishing this for a good uh, a, a whole day basically it may go into another day I'm not sure yet I really want to make this look really smart so uh, <clears throat> so now we've got our, uh, our plum mahogany light fast stain now the reason why this is a light fast stain is this is spirit based exactly the same as the polish but this can also be mixed in with cellulose based products like a pre-cat lacquer so if you was a sprayer You'd be using a, a pre-cat lacquer. Now I've got some pre-cat lacquer over here somewhere, which I'll show you. <clears throat> so for instance, here we go. This is a, a semi-matte 25% pre-cat lacquer. Now you can put that on with a brush. You'd have to really water it down as well. Um, it needs to go on with a special type of brush, which I'm going to show you now. Right, okay, this is called a squirrel hair mop. Um, this is actually um, made in uh, British made. There you go. So this is the uh, towel of a squirrel, believe it or not. It, this is super fine. So you could uh, you could put the, the lacquer on with one of those. You could actually put that on with one of those. I wouldn't, I, I don't myself. I never usually do it like this. I find brushes to be... Ah, uh, it just goes on thick and gloopy, but th this is super fine. That is probably the best thing. I mean, if you used a uh, a fairly decent paintbrush like this, a Hamilton, you could probably put your uh, your wall base varnish on with that if you wanted. But I mean, that that's still quite nice. But th I mean, th these are highly expensive, so. Uh, this is a new one which I haven't used yet. So I'll use this for doing a bit of staining and stuff like that. But you can actually use that for polishing as well. Anyway, we won't get carried away with too much uh, jargon. So let's crack on. So <clears throat> we've got our, our plum mahogany light fast stain. So we're going to add a, pe a bit in, into the polish. Now I'm very experienced in this. So I'm just going to add what I feel is right. I never measure it out. I just want to get it. I mean you can just. The, the best thing to do is to start off with less of it and then you can increase the intensity of the colour as you go along now get that glove back on try to reuse these gloves at the moment because uh, they're a bit sparse due to the uh, the lockdown and everything else that's going on right so we we'll just uh, give it a bit of a swirl with my finger now you can see the colour there you see now usually <clears throat> I would start off with only a very slight amount in there 
Um, but because this is a stripey effect anyway, it doesn't matter if we get stripes in it. So we're just going to water that down a little bit as well with some mess, just to give it a, uh, a watered down uh, amount. Just to water it down a bit, sorry. Right, okay, so this is some old hospital sheet there. Okay, so we just rip that. We just want to get this down to a nice sort of size so we can handle it. Okay, so that's that. Now, we had our, um, no, we haven't, no. We, we did have our piece of cloth, but we've, uh, I must have ditched it beforehand. Right, okay, so we're going to use another piece of stocking here. Now, I'm sorry about this, uh, the mess in my studio at the moment. Um, I moved in here, built a studio, everything's got chucked in here. Uh, my wife's got me landscaping the garden at the moment. So I haven't got time to, I haven't had time to sort this out. I've got my lathes down on the floor, a pillar drills over there, my bandsaws over here, a linisher, fret saw. Uh, I need to get it all set up, but at the moment I haven't had any time. So, uh, and in between that, I'm building this as well. So it's taking up loads of my time. So basically, we've got our uh, open fad at the moment, as we call it. Um, this is just some stocking out rolled up. <clears throat> We're going to put it into the polish with the uh, with the plum mahogany uh, light fast stain added, and then we're going to wrap it round. So effectively, what this does, it gives you a super smooth finish. So we we'll move some bits out of the way because uh, what's going to happen is they're going to get knocked off the side. Um, put the lid on that for a second. Right. Okay. So here we go. So basically, we're going to take our, we wrap it around nice and tight like that. Give your hand a bit of a smooth over. Make sure there's no debris on the surface, any dust or anything. And we're going to start going backwards and forwards with it. Just as you come off the end, just flip it off. Now I've been doing this job for uh, since 1988 now, so <laughs> long old time. What I don't know about polishing uh, isn't worth knowing, to be honest with you. So there you go. So if you notice there, it's uh, it's starting to come up slightly uh, darker compared to the sides. Now as we come around the front there, you see you see that bit there. Look, see see the colour going on there. So if we come around here. And as you say, with this, uh, as I say, with this uh, sort of finish, uh, <clears throat> it doesn't really matter if it goes slightly stripy, because um, because it's that stripy sort of finish anyway. Put that up there; it's falling over. Stick that there. As I say, I'm in a bit of a mess in here at the moment, but I'll have it all sorted out soon, and I'll show you the studio once it's all nice and set up properly there we go we're going to go around the sides there and basically uh spirit based which means uh methylated spirit based products they dry pretty quick they evaporate very fast so <clears throat> now you can see that's already changed the, the finish has changed the colors enhanced already so what, what basically effectively this is doing is is sort of uh fading back the grain that i've put in it the false grain and the more that i build the color up the more the grain gets uh, faded back right okay we're going to go over it again with uh, a, another coat and then we're gonna then i'm going to come back after i've done around about 15 or 20 coats uh, you can't watch this all day it'll just take forever so then you'll get a gist of how the color's built up so this is another coat going on now so what I do is I start at that end and come this way and then on the second coat I go back the other way. Now this is a very old way of doing polishing. Um, everything's sprayed these days. Um, I still do a lot of polishing for customers. <clears throat> a hell of a lot of polishing actually. Because I don't really do spray finishes. I've got I've, I've actually got an Apollo spray system um, and I've got a big fan that's going to go in the wall in here as well. Um, which I'm going to get around to fitting in and I will be doing a bit of spraying but the beauty of this this is because it's uh it's a stripy finish anyway as I keep saying it's uh it's going to look uh it's going to come up really well now if this was a piece of wood that you 
you was polishing and you wanted a really even finish over it, then then you would start off with a very minimal amount of staining with the polish. And then you really gradually build it up. It takes ages. And um, as you can see, there's a chair there I've been working on, a rocking chair for a customer. Uh, if you come around there, you can see the real... Oh, that's got a high gloss finish at the moment on it. You can see that. Um, it gets denibbed back with a four noughts wire wall and then waxed. And it gives you a very sort of satin finish to it. And it's super smooth. And it's like a smoother silk when you touch it once it's wire walled. So there we go. We've uh, we've done two coats on that at the moment. Um, I'm going to carry on. Uh, get up to around about 20 coats. And then I'll come back to you. This is more likely going to have over 100 coats on it by the time I finish with it. And when you uh, equate this sort of polishing to varnish, um, <clears throat> varnish is more of a DIY product, and you tend to only put two or three coats on of that, and it goes on very gloopy, and and uh, you get that sort of DIY finish. With this, this is a professional way of doing wood finishing, and you basically, what I do is I fill my way with it. So I'll basically start building up the polish, and depending on what type of wood you're polishing, um you, you you basically how do i say um some would take more polish than others others take less it just depends so i feel my way with it and, and then i get to the stage where i feel that it's at the right stage to finish then i cut it back with wire wool or i'll buff it up with uh, some uh, rubbing compound to make it more glossy depending on what the person wants the customer wants or anything but but as this uh, with this I'm not entirely sure I'm going to finish it at the end. I'm going to just film away with it and see how it comes out. So anyway, I'll be back tomorrow um, and then we'll carry on and I'll show you what we'll do next. So see you later. Hello. So we're uh, we're back again this morning. Um, if you look down here, I've already started striping it again across because basically if you look at this section here, uh, what happens is, is the more you build up, the, um, the stripes get faded back quite a bit so what we want to do is you want to maintain that really nice stripy effect so i've been going over again with it so it's like a two stage it could be three stage striping yet and what you'll find is uh you've still got the old stripe underneath so it's giving you like a fade back so it, it really gives you a sense of a real grain effect so basically i'm just going to carry on over the top of this one here and then we're going to be building up color again after this straight over the, the whole of the uh the piece again um if you look onto the side parts there still uh, and and the front you may not be able to see it on the camera you can still see the stripiness of the the end, ed, edge of the plywood um and uh, that that still looks fine it's just the top this uh the false grain it tends to fade back so we, we really want to maintain that stripy because that's the whole idea of having a zebra zebra wood effect um so we just keep going over. So we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back once we we're going to carry on striping this over, and then we're going to start introducing some more colour and building it up. And then we'll be back once we've built up the colour again, just to show you what it looks like. It was the same process with our uh, with our stain uh, polish with the stain uh, built into it that we've poured in, mixed it up. Uh, it gives you a nice cloudy effect over the top. It or basically it fades back the grain a bit, but that's the idea to to give it realism to it so you'll uh, you'll see that once i've got to that stage so i'll be back uh, in a few hours i'll leave this to dry a few hours i'll be back and then we'll show you how it looks then right okay after leaving the um the plinth to uh set or to dry for for quite a while now um i've given this around 30 coats now um it's uh it's a bit toffee apple so that's how it goes initially because i built up shed loads of coats on it so basically what we're going to be doing now is denibbing this all over um, just to flatten out everything again. So I'm in no rush to get this done really quick. Generally, when I do things for myself, I try to rush it. It's, uh, it's a terrible affair. I just want to get things done and uh, the wife's on my case a lot of the time as well. <laughs> so anyway, so we're going we're gonna to just denib this all back and then we're going to be giving this another load of coats and that. Uh, we're just going to keep building this up and building this up. Now, I'm not sure at the end of it um, what way I'm going to go with this, whether I'm going to polish it into a, a high gloss finish 
or whether I'm just going to give it a, a wire wooling and wax and give it a sort of satin look to it. Um, there's several options I can do. So one of them obviously is uh, make it to a high gloss finish. So what I do is I use a rubbing compound on it uh, to buff it up and then I'll use a car wax over the top of it and that will and really give it a, 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 a really uh, deep shine. Um, the problem with high gloss finishes is over a period of time they tend to uh, <clears throat> get slightly scratched and start looking a bit dull and then you have to keep buffing them up. Now if I do a satin finish uh, I won't have that issue with it but what, what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll think about it as it goes on I'll, I'll, I'll be able to get a feel of how it looks and then I can then do the um, decide what I'm going to do with that so uh, so we've got a denibbed it we've denibbed the top of it nearly uh, we're just taking the top layer off a very slight bit um, this has had so many coats already but because I've done the the zebra wood effect now twice it, it leaves it slightly proud on the surface especially there you've got a slight ridge there that'll be gone by the end by the time I finished it can you see that there by the time I finished it that'll be gone but we'll just give it a bit of a more of a flatten back in that area. So that's 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 gone down a bit now. Um, so uh, I'm going to carry on flatten this back, uh, and then I'll show you. So I'm flattening this back first of all with uh, P500, which is just about the right grade to uh, denib this back. So I'll be back once I've denibbed it all. Right. Okay. We're just coming to the end of uh, flattening it back, denibbing it all over. Um, and then we're going to wipe it down with some baby wipes just to get all rid of all the flour on the surface of it. That's what we call it, flouring up when we're flattening it back. And then we're going to uh, then we're going to start putting uh, a load more coats on it. So I'm probably going to build up, uh, I'd say probably another, I don't know, 15, 20 coats on it, uh, and then leave it to dry. And I might leave it for a couple of days because it's had a lot of uh, a lot of polish on it, so it really needs to. Uh, uh, set um, even though this is spirit based it's still uh, <clears throat> it's still had a hell of a lot of coats and you don't want it to emboss when you touch it so um, yes so uh, just give another bit to the top again the sides are fine because they've got no full strain on the sides it's just this top bit where I've piled on the uh, the zebra effect nice and thick and the beauty of doing that in two stages is I've probably explained this already, but you get that you get that like uh look look there's another grain underneath it, it gives it that nice effect to it. Like almost like a 3D effect. Well when you look into grain of wood at an angle when it's when it's really nicely polished, you get that sense of uh that the wood is back further than the actual surface. So it really gives you that sense of depth to the uh to the grain. Right, okay, so now we've got it to that stage. Now, uh, we need to find the baby wipes, which are down here. <clears throat> and I'm going to reach over and get some more cloth out of my bag there. So, there's some cloth there. Rip a bit of that off, because we're going to use this just to dry it off after. You need to get rid of all the dust off it. You don't need that on there when you're doing it. So let's put that on there. Right. Okay, see how nice that looks already. <laughs> Got a really nice colour to it. Um, I'm going to build the colour slightly deeper than that, so I'm going to carry on. Now, uh, this plum mahogany, I'm not sure whether this plum mahogany is going to go too much darker than that anyway, so I'm probably going to introduce a bit of uh, rosewood, dark rosewood stain to it now, because I'm after getting that real depth of colour. Um, you can see how shiny that looks, but it's only because the water's on the surface of it from the uh, from the wipe. There we go, get that all off of there, around there. Now we're going to do this uh, this video in uh, two stages because it's already, the, the time's already gone on quite a lot. And I know some people speed their videos up, but I like to explain it extremely uh, perfectly so you know exactly what's going on and that in case you want to do some, um, some finishes of your own. So, um... We're going to upload this video now at this stage <clears throat> and then we're going to come back and we're going to uh, carry on with it and show you 
the next stage. So uh, thanks for watching another Tweaker Man video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to give me a thumbs up.